Hello and welcome to our presentation outlining the Year 9 options process. Myself, Mrs Stoker, along with Mr Crawford, will be giving you some information about the core subjects and the option subjects um, and the process that will follow. Additionally, you will see short presentations from a number of different subjects providing a range of information. As you approach the end of Year 9, it is critical that you begin to think about the decisions that will affect the rest of your education at your time here at Cardinal Wiseman. Start thinking about routes onto college, sixth form and beyond and understand the subjects that are offered in the school that are core and those that are optional. We have a core and an optional curriculum in years 10 and 11. The core subjects are listed alongside the optional subjects. The optional subjects um, are a range of GCSE and BTEC. Further detail on those can be found in the options guide that will be shared alongside this presentation. Some important dates over the next week or so. Um, the booklet will be distributed giving an overview of the information in the PowerPoint. Year 9 will complete a taster day of options on Wednesday the 19th of May, followed by the parents' information evening on Thursday the 20th of May. It is really important that the deadline for the options form to be submitted is met, which is the Wednesday before half term, the 26th of May. So looking ahead um, is quite a scary thing, but really, really important. Um, so as part of this process, it's really important that Year 9 think about uh, their future path. So are they thinking of completing A-levels or going to university? Is it an apprenticeship that's the thing that is in the future for that, for that child? Um, have they looked at courses and available sixth forms and colleges that they might want to go to and what courses those sixth form and colleges offer? Um, and also looking even further ahead to potential universities. Um, if it's a university course that is intended on, um, have they looked at the entry requirements that they would need to get onto that course? Because that could impact the subjects they choose. Um, so the EBAC is something you may have heard of, it's a set of good academic qualifications and it's looked upon really, really favourably by sixth forms and universities. Students who've got the EBAC um, go to the top of the pile in terms of um, students that get into those universities and sixth forms. Um, the EBAC qualifications make you really competitive. Um, and it's what most students are completing in schools up and down the country. Um, it's also proven that gaining the EBAC can provide students with much better opportunities um, later on in life. Um, it's really essential if um, your student is thinking about studying academic subjects at sixth form or thinking about going to college or university. Um, and a really good idea if you're entirely unsure about future career goals because it will give you options later on. Um, to achieve the EBAC, you'll study these subjects, English, Math, Science, History or Geography and Spanish. So that's some brief information on the options process and the qualifications that we offer. Um, there are two option forms that have been distributed to students. One outlines those students um, that will be going hopefully alongside the EBAC route and those um, alongside a different route where GCSE Spanish is still an option. It's really important that the forms are completed and if you've got any questions do contact uh, myself, Miss Stoker or Mr Crawford at school. Good afternoon, Year 9. I'm going to be talking to you today about um, your study of English at GCSE. Now, the first thing um, to note is that the study of English is the study of two separate subjects. So you will receive two separate GCSEs for your study of English. They are divided into English Literature and English Language. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what both of those separate GCSEs entail. Firstly, um, English Literature is the study of texts created in the English language. So we will be exploring plays, novels, poetry and texts of that nature. For English Literature we follow the AQA um, new specification. So there are two papers. Um, paper 1 is 50% of your overall grade and paper 2 is 50% as well. Paper 1 is called Shakespeare and the 19th century novel. The Shakespeare text that you'll be studying is Macbeth and the 19th century novel is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Paper 2 is called Modern Texts and Poetry, and there are three sections to that paper. Um, the first one, the modern texts, is An Inspector Calls, which is a play by J.B. Priestley. 
you will be studying the Power and Conflict Poetry Anthology um, by a collection of various authors, there are 15 poems, and then you will study Unseen Poetry, so you'll be provided with two unseen poems in the exam. English Language is um, going to be studied also with the uh, new AQA syllabus, um, and it is also divided into two papers, again, both 50% of the overall grade. Paper one is called Explorations in Creative Writing. So you will be provided with an extract in section A, a fictional extract, where you will have to answer four questions in section A, um, analysing that extract. Section B will then be a creative writing piece, whereby you will have to produce a piece of descriptive writing. It may be a story, for example. Paper two is called Writer's Perspectives and Viewpoints. And in that exam, you'll be provided with two, um, again, unseen non-fiction extracts. One of these extracts will be from the 20th century and one will be from the 19th century. Similarly to paper one, you will have to answer four questions in section A, comparing and analysing these extracts. And again, section B will be your own piece of creative writing. But rather than being descriptive, it will be transactional. So you will be writing to argue, persuade or advise in the form of a letter or an article or a blog. The study of English is going to be integral in um, underpinning your study of all other subjects and the study of English will ensure that you are a well-rounded citizen by the end of your study. Thank you, Yana. At the end of Year 11, you will all take the Edexcel GCSE Maths exam. The reason we must all study maths at GCSE is that it provides us with the skills we will need in everyday life as an adult in both our day-to-day -day lives and our careers. GCSE maths provides a strong foundation for further academic or vocational study or for further employment. You will sit three papers, one non calculator and two calculator. They are all worth the same amount and are each an hour and a half long. You will do either foundation or higher tier. In foundation, you can achieve a grade one to five and in higher, it is possible to achieve grades four to nine. Your teacher will decide your tier for you based on what they think will suit you best. This can be changed if necessary. It is not possible to say what topics on each paper. Any topics could be on either of the three papers. The maths you learn in year 10 and 11 is based on the maths you learnt in year 7 to 9 and even on the maths you learnt in primary school. All the topics are split into areas. Number, algebra, ratio, proportion and rates of change, geometry and measures, probability and statistics. And you can see the weighting for each area for each respective tier on the table on the screen. For example, number for foundation is 25% of the marks, whereas number for higher tier is worth 15% of the marks. Questions are also split into AO1, AO2 and AO3, which in our knowledge books we call independent task reasoning and problem solving. Therefore, as well as learning the knowledge required in maths, we must also learn how to apply it and when we need to use it, which is what makes maths so valuable in our future careers. As there are two calculator papers, it is important that we are familiar with how to use the calculator. We do have calculators available to use at school, but you may find it useful to have one for home and one of your own to get used to. If you do buy a calculator, it must be a scientific calculator and the brand we recommend is Casio. The ones that you would want are the ones you can see on the screen at the moment. As there is so much maths content to remember, it is important that you're constantly revisiting the maths you learn in lesson. And the best way to do this is by using memory or revision function on Hegarty Maths at home. Pupils who have scored green for all of the videos throughout the UK have gone on to achieve grades eight or nine. On the screen, you can also see some other helpful websites, such as Corbett Maths, Maths Genie and On Maths, which you may want to use throughout year 10 and 11 to keep revising and revisiting topics. 
Maths is used in all careers, even the ones you wouldn't expect. If you wanted to find out more about careers using maths, you can visit mathscareers.org.uk. But whatever you go on to do in future, maths will be really important. And that's why we want to give you your best opportunity to score the best grade possible for you in your maths GCSE. If you have any questions about GCSE maths, don't hesitate to ask your maths teachers. Thank you. At GCSE level in RE, we study the EDUCAS Root B specification, which covers the main practices, beliefs and ideas of Christianity and Judaism. Alongside the religious teachings, we also consider alternative views, such as those held by atheists and humanists. Students in Year 9 have already started studying for the third component of the GCSE, the study of another world faith. Because we are a Catholic school, our other world faith focuses on the important people, places, practices and beliefs of Judaism as a foundation to the development of Christianity. The study of Judaism is assessed by an hour and a half examination at the end of Year 11. The first part of the GCSE, which students will begin in the autumn term of Year 10, is a predominantly Christian paper where students will consider two themes. The first theme, Origins and Meaning, covers some really important issues, such as the compatibility of science and faith when discussing the origins of the universe, as well as some controversial topics like abortion. The second theme, good and evil, explores the origins of evil from Christian, Jewish and non-religious perspectives, as well as key Christian theories, such as the incarnation, Trinity, Jesus as a source of moral authority. This is assessed by an hour and a half examination at the end of year 11. The next paper is also an hour and a half examination and it explores the further themes of life and death, sin and forgiveness. The issues explored here, such as euthanasia and the right to die, capital punishment and the necessity to punish criminals, help to build the skills of analysis and evaluation, which is one of the main objectives as covered by this GCSE specification. Students will learn using high quality knowledge booklets, which have been specifically designed by RE teachers to help students make the best possible progress. Alongside knowledge booklets, revision guides and materials as published by exam boards will be made available for students to use for independent study at home. Hello Year 9. I'm just going to update you a little bit about the science course that we study here at Cardinal Wiseman. As you know, it builds on the knowledge and skills that you have learned at Key Stage 3. The course we study is AQA Combined Science Synergy, and this is an equal split of biology, chemistry and physics. <clears throat> the exams you complete at the end are four lots of one hour, 45 minutes, all of which cover biology, chemistry and physics, a range of maths and science skills and the 21 required practicals, some of which I know you have studied already. You will be awarded two grades for the final grades, which range from 9-9 down to 1-1. One, one. And it can be anything in between like 5-5 five, five or 5-4. Five, After every topic that you study, you complete a test which helps us to monitor your progress. And closer to the end of the course, it will help us to decide which tier of exam you will take. If you intend to study science beyond GCSE, you'll be entered for higher as it is likely that you will require grades of 6-6 six, six or above. For this reason, it is so important that you use the assessments to show us what you can do. Please talk to your science teacher if you want any further information about the course. Alternatively, please email me with any questions that you might have. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Mrs Ridgway. I'm here to share with you what the students at Cardinal Wiseman School study for GCSE history. We study the AQA specification and the AQA specification is broken down into two sections. The first of the sections is looking at understanding the modern world. Within this unit of work, we look at um, a period study where we look at Germany, specifically looking from the Kaiserreich all the way up to World War II and discussing the impact that this had on ordinary people, but also the bigger changes. How did we go from democracy to dictatorship? What were the events that led to those at uh, the outbreak of the Second World War. Uh, it's one of those uh, units of study that most students find really straightforward and really enjoy. The second of the 
sections of part one would be section B, and this is a wider world depth study. The one that we're particularly looking at is conflict and tension in the interwar years. So we're going from what happened at the end of World War I, looking at the Treaty of Versailles, the setting up of the League of Nations, how successfully that went, and then the, the events that led right up until the Second World War. So the Nazi Soviet pact, for example. This is the unit of study that the students have already been working on at year nine, and they've had a really successful start to their uh, period of study. It might be really interesting for you to go and ask them about the Treaty of Versailles, the League of Nations, Manchuria, Abyssinia. They've got some fantastic knowledge. So it's a really good start to their GCSE. The second area of study then that we go on to look at is shaping the nation. This is very much the British area of the study and again is split into two parts. We study the thematic Britain, power and the people from 1170 to the present day, looking at uh, the struggle for power from Magna Carta right up until the Notting Hill riots and trying to decide, are we really an equal society in Britain today? And in what ways have we become more equal and what work is there still to do? It's a really interesting study. Uh, and the best thing about it is it's kind of real people and how real people have made their mark in the past. The final unit then that we look at is the Elizabethan England from 1568 to 1603. This is probably my favourite unit. Elizabeth kind of comes in and is expected to be a bit of a failure because she's a female. Um, but by the end of it, we have this idea of this great golden age, this Gloriana, this fantastic queen. Um, and the study kind of unpicks what has led to those uh, those images of Elizabeth being created. But it also looks at um, what lies underneath that? Was it really fantastic for absolutely everybody? Um, so really, really interesting study. How we assess? So assessment is at, at ECSE. There are two exams, paper one and paper two, both worth 50 percent. And both of the exams are for um, two hours each. So you get an hour on each section, an hour on Germany, an hour on conflict and tension. And that's a two hour paper. Then you do the Elizabeth and the Power and the People paper and each one is given an hour. Within the exam, there are lots of short answer questions um, and longer essay style questions. Students will be asked to engage with different historians, evaluate how convincing arguments have been based on contextual knowledge. For example, they might be asked to decide whether AJT AJP Taylor was right to suggest that the Second World War broke out because Britain and France failed to stop Hitler when they had the opportunity, or whether or not Elizabeth's Gloriana was shaped in her unfortunate childhood, as suggested by David Stark. Also be opportunities to look at more modern events, such as the race riots in Notting Hill and the struggle for equality. They will do this as true historians would, using lots of evidence, great stories and sharing their own knowledge. They will be taught by either myself or other members of the history department, including Mr. Keegan and Mrs. Buckle, who both have fa shown fantastic results at GCSE. So we're really excited to welcome all of the students who are going to study history GCSE next year. Hello Year 9, it's Miss Gannon here and I am here to talk to you about the GCSE Geography course. When you pick your GCSE options, you will pick either Geography or History. Geography is assessed with three papers at the end of year 11. Paper one and paper two are worth 35% and paper three is worth 30%. Paper one is called Living with a Physical Environment and covers the physical geography that you will study. So you will explore natural hazards in the form of tectonic hazards, so earthquakes and volcanoes, climatic hazards, tropical storms, and an ever pressing issue of climate change. We will study ecosystems where we will look in particular at polar and tropical rainforest ecosystems um, and the issues and opportunities available within those ecosystems. We will also have a look at the UK landscape and how coastal and river landscapes have been formed over time to create particular landforms that we recognise and how humans interact with these landscapes to manage and protect. Paper two, challenges in the human environment, covers the human geography aspects. So here we would have a look in particular at urban issues and challenges, looking at Rio de Janeiro and Birmingham, who both present different issues and challenges based on their population growth and the wealth of that country. We would have a look at development, so uneven development across our, wor our world and how we can reduce the development gap through a number of different ways. We would 
have a particular focus on Nigeria, which is a newly emerging economy and an example of how development is a dynamic process and is ever changing. We'd also look at the UK economy, how it has changed throughout the 21st century and how it is continuing to change and ways in which the UK have approached developing its own infrastructure to uh, further the development of its economy. We will have a look at resource management, in particular the global distribution of food, water and energy and also how it's distributed across the UK. We would have a particular focus on water management, looking at the global supply, looking at water insecurity and projects created to sustainably manage water supplies. Paper three is worth 30% and is your geographical application and skills paper. This paper covers your fieldwork aspect of the course. So we would carry out two fieldwork day trips. One for a human topic where we would go into Birmingham city centre, explore how the opening of Grand Central has affected the surrounding city centre areas and how different areas of the city centre have been regenerated, for example, Digbeth. We would have a physical fieldwork day trip where we would go to Carding Mill Valley and we would study how the river changes as we move downstream. You would also be expected within that paper to be able to demonstrate geographical skills, in particular mathematical skills, where you are analysing data and being able to interpret and come to conclusions about this. Finally, paper three involves a pre-release booklet, which is given to schools in March, allowing us six weeks of preparation. The pre-release booklet has a number of different um, figures and sources of information, ranging from text to uh, mathematical information which you would be expected to evaluate and to come to a conclusion uh, and be able to answer questions relating to this specific information. Geography teaches you a number of different skills that are transferable across both different subjects, but also different aspects of your life. It, it develops being able to think and to write critically, being able to interpret and analyse data, being able to connect different aspects of the world that we live in and understand how issues do not happen in isolation. If you are interested in learning more about our earth and our world and the people who live here and how we interact together and with our earth, then please do consider picking GCSE Geography as one of your options. If you have any questions with regards to the course, please feel free to come and speak to myself or Mrs Biddle and we will be happy to answer any of your questions. At GCSE Spanish, we follow the Excel board and you can be entered either for foundation or higher tier. The following themes are studied in the, at the GCSE course. Identity and culture, local area holidays and travel, school, future aspirations and work, and international and global dimension. The four exams are as follows. The listening exam will last 30 minutes uh, for foundation tier and 40 minutes for higher tier. Most of the questions will need an answer in English, but there will be some questions in Spanish as well. The reading exam will be a variety of questions requiring both English and Spanish responses. There will be also translation into English. The exam will last 45 minutes for foundation tier and one hour for higher tier. The writing exam will last one hour 10 minutes for foundation tier and one hour 20 minutes for higher tier. The foundation writing exam will comprise one description of a photo and two writing tasks and also five short translations into Spanish. The higher tier will comprise two writing questions and a short paragraph translation into Spanish. The speaking exam will include a role play and the description of a photo with some questions and a general conversation about one of the topics studied. You will have 12 minutes preparation time and it will be seven minutes long for the foundation tier and nine minutes long for the higher tier. The students will learn by using high quality knowledge books which have been written by specialised Spanish teachers to ensure that the best progress is achieved. Alongside with this, a variety of resources and provision guides will be provided as well. And also, if you do speak another language at home, please contact us because we might be able to offer you an extra qualification at GCSE.